Hi, the date is July 16th, 2017, and welcome to Hit the Books Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Holcomb, and to my right is Emery Saunders. And we're here to tell you the latest comic book news, uh, discuss some comic book topics, and uh, leave you to your business. And hopefully you'll come back, hopefully you enjoy it. Always come back for more, because there's plenty more where this came from. Hopefully, you know, once we get the schedule worked out, I think <laughs> we should be regular now. I'm my my goal is to aim to release every Monday at the start of the week, so you'll know what's coming to your comic book shops near you. So hopefully we'll record Friday, Saturday, somewhere around there. I'll edit it Sunday, and then we'll have it to you by every Monday from here on out. Yeah, it sounds pretty solid. It always sounded solid, but it never worked out that way. But <laughs> hopefully we will be regular again now. Yes. Just, uh, life, could you stop happening, please? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, Emery, uh, what have you been up to uh, since the last podcast, since the last review? What have you been reading? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, when it comes to reading, um, it's been a, quite a bit of Marvel in their... It seems like they almost have like multiple events going on at one time. Which is really weird. <laughs> um, I don't think I've read anything of Secret Empire yet. I'm still getting through uh, the Monsters Unleashed for Marvel. How's that been? Uh, I mean, it's like, oh, we're heroes. Let's throw in a monster. <laughs> like, oh, we, we all have to save the day. To be fair, the, the Batman characters all had something along those lines for a monster event tie-in thing. Oh yeah, and I I didn't bother to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it was fine, but I don't know. Eh. After after Rebirth, I don't know. I'm kind of getting sick of all these reboots, and you know, Major there were events. there there was things wrong with New Fifty Two, but yeah, I was willing to go forward. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I can't. I, both Marvel and DC have this problem where they think that it's perfectly cool to put all these characters from different continue continuums you know and just yeah. throw them together in the same worlds and that's gonna jive just perfectly but it, i mean comics are always silly but to me that's like the <laughs> ultimate <laughs> pillar of silly you know yeah. like i don't care if you write an independent story instead of like maintaining a, a constant universe but don't put all the universes together that have been previously <laughs> established because it's just goofy and it just it doesn't work for me i don't know right uh i think the specifically for marvel I'm not sure exactly how it all shakes out for Rebirth for DC, but uh, Marvel's Secret Wars, the most recent one. That yeah, you're the, really far away from your mic. Oh, oh I'll get closer. Uh, uh, the Secret Wars, uh, they, for some reason, thought it was a good idea to, as a way of getting all of these characters together, let's just destroy both of the major universes and kind of smash them all together and in a weird way kind of separate them until we're ready to make them all one world. Sure. It it, it was just weird. Yeah, for DC what they did is they had this big major event where these, you know, basically gods of, <laughs> you know, dark side and uh ah, forget his name off the top of my head. I'm just having a brain fart. It's been that kind of day for me. Yeah. But these two cosmic entities basically uh, force all of the universes to combine. And uh, then they just kind of imprison each world and make them fight each other and kill each other off. And then, you know, whoever is remaining, which is the most popular <laughs> <laughs> versions of each character, you know. Of course. <laughs> are the ones that remain and they're all mixed together and they're all confused about each other's past and nothing makes sense and there's multiple forms of the same character in the same universe and it doesn't make sense and then they have to kill one because they're like, oh, this doesn't make sense. We should probably <laughs> kill one of them, you know, <laughs> and it's just, it's a lot of nonsense. I don't know. Again, comic books are silly nonsense to begin with oftentimes, but I don't know. It's kind of hard as an adult to want to, you know, spend my money on these comics that I usually love, you know, and... And then there's Wally West. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just all over the place. It, yeah. I haven't uh, been reading too much. I recently went to a sale and picked up a few uh, comics for my collection uh, that I 
needed to fill out a few of my uh, collection bonus. I, I've been trying to collect all the number ones for uh, New 52 because I, I really did like how they started off. They, they started off pretty strong. And then I got this pretty cool Rogue and Gambit cover. I might give it to you. I don't know if you want it. I just oh, yeah, I'll totally take it. I just thought it was really cool. I don't know. I'd probably frame it, but uh, maybe I'll give it to you. <laughs> and then I got another one. I'm trying to get this Spider-Man Black Cat collection. Then I found this Vertigo. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about it, but it, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's uh, the number one of the Unwritten. So I'm gonna check that out and see if that's any good. And then uh, another part of my uh, Nightwing collection that I'm trying to finish out. Part one and six of the. Uh, Year one collection for Nightwing. Wasn't particularly great, but I'm a big Nightwing nerd, so <laughs> of course I got to go for him. Yeah, go with what you know. But yeah, I got those bagged and boarded, and I'll probably frame them once I have time, which never happens, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of framed. I uh, like you saw, I used to have the wall, and people that are familiar with our <laughs> past a year ago when I, right. when I had the house, I was. I had everything framed and hung up and stuff, so I'm, I'll probably do that again in some form at some point. It's just really hard to nail into brick. <laughs> 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 but yeah, nothing new with me. So uh, let's uh, jump into the news. Yeah, let's get to it. So Emery has seen the new Spider-Man Homecoming movie, which is coming out to a lot of good reviews and uh, apparently doing pretty well. Uh Fun fact, it's got a 94, or at least last I saw, 94% rating That's awesome. on Rotten Tomatoes. That's great to hear. I don't know. I'm s- it, I am I didn't even see the uh, second iteration of Spider-Man because <laughs> I felt it, it had rebooted so quickly. Yeah. And this, this is just doing the same thing to me where I was finally getting used to Andrew Garfield and was about to sit down to watch the Garfield films. And then they <laughs> completely changed it up on me again. You know, we got Spider-Man. Yeah. So another Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't know. Again, for those who are not familiar with us, Emery is usually the Marvel authority. I'm usually the DC authority. Usually. Uh, so I just haven't bothered to see it yet. Uh, I I was a big Spider-Man fan as a kid, but that was more because of the cartoon than anything. Oh, you know? yeah. Uh, I think the cartoons are why I'm an X-Men fan. Yeah, uh, that too. Yeah. Uh, X-Men I've always loved and will always love, but Spider-Man's never really hit it completely for me. Uh, so uh, hearing all these good reviews is making me like feel that I need to see this immediately <laughs> <laughs> and get to it. Yeah. Uh, Without spoiling anything, because I'm sure we'll do a review once I see it. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did you think? Um, I thought it was good. I'm not going to say it was like 94% Rotten Tomatoes good, because I did have a couple of issues with it. As we usually do. Yes. <laughs> we usually <laughs> have at least one or two issues with it. Yeah. Um, I think my biggest issue with it was that it felt like... A Miles Morales story, but instead Peter Parker. Gotcha. That, that That's my it, biggest gripe with them. This might be a spoiler. I don't think it is because I saw it online. So if you don't want to hear this, you know, plug your ears, la 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 for five seconds. But yeah. uh, isn't Miles Morales, doesn't he make a cameo or something? He does not. No? Actually. Oh, okay. Because um, I thought uh, I had read something about that a yeah. while ago. Uh, again, spoiler alert, earmuffs for the next uh, five to ten seconds. Uh, it's his uncle that makes a cameo. And it, it's a blink and you'll miss it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, it, I Doesn't that kind of compromise the whole it, it does, backstory? It, it does, but uh, I think what they're really going for is, oh, yeah, you want Miles Morales? Here's a story that should have had him but instead peter parker and okay. also we'll throw like a little tidbit in here um i have some questions for you but i'll wait until i see the movie and we talk about it to bring it up but oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm just curious what your opinion is oh yeah 
Uh, uh, this movie is definitely worth the price of admission. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to ask the question anyway. Yeah. Do you, do you think it would have been better if they had just gone the Miles Morales route from the beginning? And just since part Peter Parker already exists so recently as Andrew Garfield? Um, honestly, I think the the only way that a Miles Morales story would have worked is if Miles Morales was the Spider-Man that they went with for Civil War. Uh, if they had gone with Peter Parker and somehow done like this movie as a Miles Morales Spider-Man movie, yeah, the only way that would work is if like you immediately have Peter Parker die in combat. But they didn't do that. It, like this is Marvel's like it, th- this movie is titled Spider-Man: Homecoming for a reason. Apart from the actual like high school homecoming that they have in the movie, uh, this is like. Oh, we're Marvel. We finally got Spider-Man back. <laughs> Guys, come watch this movie. All right, cool. We got to do it this time. Yeah, I'll probably... Hey. I'll, I'll have to try to see it this week then so we can review it. And... Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I, I have, like, <clears throat> one or two gripes, which we'll go over in, like, the full review. Sure. But uh, it's a good movie. It's... I was going to say it's really funny. I'm going to say it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's a pretty funny movie. But there's also some pretty, like, honest, like, this movie's got heart. Go watch the movie. <laughs> All right. And uh, next up, uh, Marvel announced some kind of Generations projects. You're familiar with it. Uh, why don't you let the listeners in? Uh, yeah. Uh, as far as the Marvel Generations, uh, th- there was a video that was released very recently Uh and it was basically the editor in chief at Marvel, Axel Alonso, saying that here comes another event, uh, like right on the heels of Secret Empire, which is the, uh, in-, in case you didn't think we were going to really stick with the whole Captain America as a Hydra agent thing, think again. Um, right on the heels of that event, we're setting up basically an event that says. As far as these legacy characters like Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, um, Riri Williams, Iron Man, um, what have you. Uh, This is an event that basically says, for any of you who have issues with these characters existing, you better suck it up because they're here to stay. (laughs) And we're going to have stories that incorporate them as well as the characters or the versions of those characters that you still know and love. Uh, How that exactly is going to work, I have no idea. As it stands right now, it's really a shame when the writers, at least the current writers, are being completely outshined by the artists. And I don't know how they're doing that because the artists are barely being given anything to work with given the level of writing that's been submitted for these comic books and i'm going to so you're not too happy with how marvel has been handling business recently uh at least in the writing department yeah the the writing needs to it needs to shape up like marvel has had some of the best writing in the past couple decades but within the last year to two years Oh, I, I don't know what's going on. It's just been like the, the level or like the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the quality. quality. Yeah, that's the word. The quality of writing has gone downhill. If you want a prime example of that, read the series titled America. You'll see what I'm talking about. America. America. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't, don't bring that song up here. <laughs> that song is too good for that comic book series. It's too good. <laughs> to give you guys an idea of how bonkers this is, and mind you, I have nothing wrong, I have nothing against this type of character being introduced as long as it's written well. But uh, the title that I was just referring to, America, the the title character, America Chavez, a... (laughs) 
and this is gonna sound funny saying it out loud, a Latina lesbian from a different dimension who always wins. <laughs> Like, literally, like, part of her backstory is that she comes from a all-women utopia where she's basically never had to struggle in her life. And to top all that, she has powers that are so, so, basically, in a word, convenient. <laughs> so she goes from a world where she is the majority and it is convenient and there isn't any kind of issue right. to our world, yet she still doesn't struggle in any way shape or form or have any kind of nah oh okay nah. she she's just like no matter what the situation i is, thought there was gonna be a good. nice a nice point to coming from this you know female <laughs> lesbian utopia it's like oh, into a world like, that is not as tolerant of such things <laughs> right <laughs> and then uh, apparently it doesn't matter which is great it's... so that's how apparently the marvel universe has evolved past prejudice <laughs> And the X Men are no longer relevant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this poor writing is killing me inside. <laughs> <laughs> nice reference. <laughs> All right, next on the list, continuing oh. with the uh, Marvel stuff, the Disney Expo shows the first footage of uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Uh, nobody has leaked the video yet, which is surprising because usually the stuff is leaked immediately. Uh, at least I haven't been able to find it, but people have been describing it. And from what they describe, there's scenes of all the Avengers, uh, including, you know, Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and Tony Stark and uh, grizzled looking Captain America and Black Panther and the and Thor crashing into apparently the Guardians of the Galaxy ship <laughs> in space somewhere <laughs> and apparently befriending them. And then it shows, you know, all the characters reacting to something terrifying or scary or, you know, doing the typical trailer thing, you know. <laughs> dun, 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 like, dun, oh, my yeah. God. What's that? And then it shows. I think it's that purple guy from, like, <laughs> several movies ago. <laughs> <laughs> is it the dark purple guy or is it the light purple guy? Yeah, That's um, how you know which universe it's from. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't see shades of purple, <laughs> <laughs> sir. It's all, like, general purple to me. Sure. Uh how rude of me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, apparently at the the end, the big like wow moment is Thanos has the gauntlet and he uses it to grab a moon or something or pull a moon closer to the planet, whatever planet they're on. And apparently Earth is being attacked and all these other things. So apparently there's a lot going on, as you would expect from Infinity War. Oh, yeah. And of course, it's coming in two parts. So I am guessing that the first part is going to be Oh, we are royally fucked. Everybody <laughs> is fucked. Everybody is dead. Fuck this. It, it had better be that. <laughs> and then the second movie will probably be, okay, we're not totally fucked. We found some hope in something, you know. And We found some, a loophole in how the gauntlet works. Yeah, probably some new character is going to appear and save their butt, you know, Adam Warlock, I'm guessing. Uh, Yeah, that's yeah. usually how it goes. So, it's uh, like, oh, Thanos showed up. Where's Adam Warlock? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, like, he, he's the guy for this. So I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be something along those lines. But it's cool that footage is f coming out. I mean, the movie's due is next year? Uh, is yeah, it 2018. Uh, it should be, uh, I think that's May, May 2015? Uh, not 2015, 2018. Uh, it should be after Black Panther. Yeah, I think Black Panther is this year, right? Yeah. Uh, no, Black Panther is early next year. Okay, so Th yeah, this year we May fourth, twenty eighteen for Infinity War. Yeah, and then Black Panther. Uh, I should probably type it in. <laughs> yep, you're right. Uh, February sixteenth, twenty eighteen. So back to back, big movies for Marvel, and then we got ragnarok left for this year and that's it right yeah for yeah marvel. as far as marvel's concerned and then um, is justice league coming out this year yeah it's coming out this summer or maybe october let me check again i know it's this year yeah let's see here really state do 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 excuse <laughs> this we'll fast forward through this Da, 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 da. November 17th, I was close. November 17th, 2017, we have Justice League. 
Which brings us into our next piece of news. Oh, yeah. uh, another movie production. Uh, this is kind of old news, but we haven't podcasted for a little bit, so forgive us for being a week or two late. But uh, apparently, uh, Joss Whedon has come in to do some reshoots for uh, Justice League as a favor for Zack Snyder and WB. Uh, Zack Snyder apparently is dealing with a huge, huge family tragedy, which I don't want to make light of. Uh, apparently, one of his kids, his daughter, committed suicide. And uh, uh, my heart goes out to him. Uh, as much as I criticize his movies, uh, <laughs> and we do criticize his movies. Yes, we do. Uh, he's still a human being, and to have to deal with something that, that horrible is 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 pretty painful to hear and i really yeah. hope the best for him and yeah my heart goes out to him yeah uh, and good on, good on wb studios for allowing him to back off from the movie and take care of his family you know yeah instead of trying to pressure him into a situation where he's already in a bad place you know yeah and yeah. uh definitely good on wb for prioritizing his family first yeah so Shout out to him uh, if you want. Send your support to him. Uh, I I, re- I genuinely hope his family and his his other children and wife and ex wife and everybody come out of this. You know, yeah, uh, healthy and awake and hopefully appreciating each other a little bit more. Yeah, you know, going forward. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and another kind of tragic new piece of news: Stanley's wife has passed. Uh, they were together for, <laughs> for an outrageously long amount of time. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> the story behind their their getting together is kind of kind of funny. It is really funny. <laughs> uh, Stanley apparently just kind of charmed the pants off her while she was, I don't know if he, she was married or getting married to another man. And they went to, I want to say, Las Vegas <laughs> <laughs> because for some reason they could get a divorce easier there, got divorced <laughs> and then got married and have been together ever since. So uh, Stanley has credited her for, you know, several times for being a big inspiration and for him pursuing uh superhero comics and uh eventually coming up with the characters he did so uh hopefully if you're listening stan you're you're doing all right and we hope to see you uh very much uh dealing with this (laughs) however you need to and uh hopefully the community has been nothing but supportive to you no yeah i think i've uh it was like shortly after she had passed, he had already done uh, basically a press conference, like remembering. Um, he very candidly and very. He seemed very upbeat during that uh, interview slash press conference that he was doing, like remembering his wife. Um, his. Oh my god! It, it was incredible. But yeah, they were yeah. they were together almost seventy years. Uh, Joan Lee, Joan, that's right. Rest in peace. Sleep easy. Yeah. I don't mean to race. be greedy, but I hope your husband doesn't join you anytime soon, <laughs> <laughs> because Stanley is a national treasure, <laughs> and I will fight anybody who says otherwise. Uh, damn right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and our last piece of news. <clears throat> Apparently, uh, Hulu. Uh, is trying to produce a Lock and Key series. Lock and Key. Which I think could be pretty good. Uh, I've only read a few issues of Lock and Key, but it, from what I did read, it was pretty awesome. I still have several issues sitting up in my... <laughs> bagged and boarded in my boxes upstairs, you know, my backlog. Again, I still need to finish Future's End and <laughs> finish, <laughs> finish the last few issues of Batman Eternal and all that nonsense that was happening years ago. Right. <laughs> let alone what's going on now. But uh, apparently they're having some production trouble. Uh, they they just lost their director. Uh, they Apparently they had the director from Doctor Strange coming on to do the series. Is that right? But uh, for whatever reason, maybe scheduling issues or uh, conflicts or something, he has dropped out. 
So it's not looking too good from the start. Uh, this could be nothing. It could end up going into production on the same schedule and having no issues, but you know, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Hulu series is, ha- have been pretty good. I, I'm A lot of people are more familiar with kind of the Netflix exclusives, but I think the Hulu exclusives are just on the same level as Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime. They, they do a great job on Hulu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're all basically trying to achieve the same thing yeah this is like really really good television that you can just binge watch in a night or two yeah <laughs> and they've succeeded <laughs> speaking of binge watching i binge watched castlevania oh. and it took me less than two hours and i was extremely disappointed that it was so short <laughs> because i enjoyed it a lot <laughs> the best complaint you can have about a show is that it's not long enough. It was outrageously short, though. Like, I, I mean... It was very yeah. clearly a test. You know, it was nothing more than a pilot. Like, <laughs> do like you we, like it? <laughs> we have to make sure that people want this. But it kind of stinks, because you only have, you know, less than two hours of something to watch, and then you have to wait probably another year to even see another feature, and it's only going to be eight episodes of the next season, which, if they're still, like, 23, 24, 25 minutes, that's, like that that's nothing <laughs> yeah I, I mean it, it's gonna be small snippets yeah i was uh, expecting like an hour long episode since i only i saw there was four and i was like okay if they're like an hour piece it's not bad nope <laughs> no <laughs> like they they're, they're you, you blink less and, than 30 minutes yeah you blink and they're over yeah but it was cool they have a lot of big talent on voice acting for them a lot of people from the hobbit movies and oh yeah so uh they're uh, they're investing in it but uh, hopefully that translates to enough content to keep me interested, you know? Yeah. The the writer for that show in particular has got me, like, continually interested in, mm-hmm. like, more of that show. Warren Ellis, uh, the guy who actually wrote uh, the Transmetropolitan series. Um, one of my favorite writers. Uh, I think... And I like I'm gonna go out on a limb here. If any of you out there are familiar with uh, Warren Ellis's work, you'll notice some isms, but th- those isms are a backdrop to just really, really amazing writing. Every time he managed to take the third Castlevania game, Dracula's Curse, which is just a game where you're a dude with a whip <laughs> and you're trying to kill Dracula. And turned it into something Game of Thrones level. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like Game of Thrones, so I'm not really. <laughs> uh, yeah, go I, ahead and boo me in the comments. I know. Boo. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll say this. I love fantasy. St- Lord of the Rings is some of my favorite stuff. Yeah. Nah, Game of Thrones. Nah. I'm, it's just. It's just. <laughs> it, yeah, to me, it's just like softcore porn with you know. With some dragons. With in some it. killing in it. <laughs> <laughs> with some murder. <laughs> uh, I, I mean. You're not wrong, but <laughs> it's still really good. All right. It, 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 I your, mean, your new season's coming, so I'm sure you'll be happy. <laughs> uh, uh, that this new season's apocryphal. That doesn't have a book tied to it. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. I don't. Yeah. I don't see how that can possibly happen in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh well, yeah, our we'll last find out. our last piece of news: Evo is playing out right now. The Injustice uh, scene has already been decided. Usually I'm a big Evo watcher. I love Evo, but money's been tight, so I haven't been able to play Injustice, and I haven't been playing all the fighting games and watching the Twitch streams and stuff. So uh, I kind of missed it, but I'll probably catch up on YouTube or whatever else. I can catch it up on Twitch or whatever. But the uh, the usual top champion, who is known as Sonic Fox, and you probably recognize him for his his cap his knitted cap he usually wears <laughs> uh got upset in the final eight and the final victor was noble ryan dragon walker uh facing up against tim commandeur hmm. i mean it's maybe commander but it's spelled commandeur <laughs> honeybee uh three to two i'm not familiar with honeybee but i am familiar with dragon so huh uh, that's it's pretty cool to see some new champions up there taking it out. It looks like Aquaman seemed to be the tournament favorite, which is not a surprise because he was pretty, pretty 
pretty dependable character to use in the first Injustice, but oh yeah, at least until Martian Manhunter came in and then <laughs> everybody just everyone just wrecked zone, face, zone the hell out of you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure whether or not that's going to happen again, or because w- they have like so many other DLC characters coming out this time. Yeah, like uh. <laughs> I haven't watched it yet, but I'm I'm assuming they didn't use gear like benefits in the tournament. If they did, uh, I would be very very disappointed. But uh, the the uh, gear I think only has benefits if you're doing like the single player like multiverse thing. Yeah, I mean the tournament's all local though to okay. reduce lag and stuff. So yeah, they probably could have if they wanted to, but I don't unless they uploaded their saves or something. I don't know how they would do that. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that was not the case. I I prefer skill, pure skill battle. Yeah, I, I like I'd say for the sake of fairness, they probably went uh, base gear the entire time. Yeah. So, uh, congrats to you, Dragon, and uh, shout out to you, Honeybee, for getting second place and uh, doing well in the tournament. Hopefully, uh, Injustice Two returns next year. Yeah. I it's got a lot of potential. I mean, there's a lot of people, particularly Street Fighter fans that just try to shit on everything that is <laughs> you know nether realm related but i love the mk fighters and I, the new ones and i love the injustice fighters i think they're extremely good uh from what i hear there's actually quite a few people who jumped ship really because like street fighter 5 was so like beginner friendly <laughs> yeah like the the, the and level I, of play, I've just heard was they've like so dumbed down. I've it's, heard the newest yeah. Marvel versus Capcom has had some issues as well. I don't think it's out yet, but I've heard people are not big fans of it so far. Yeah, that there's quite a few reasons for that that we could spend all day talking about. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the tag team, you know, kind of chaotic fighters, but. Yeah. Uh, I can I can see it. Definitely respect the people that play those games because they play it at such a high level, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see what happens going forward. I think uh, Nether Realm has been on the upswing though for the past you know, five or six years. All right. Well, that uh, concludes all our news. So we'll get to the new releases at your local comic book stores. Uh, digital is great, but. Uh, your local comic book stores provide a community that you just can't replicate. And when you have those physical copies in your hand, there's nothing else like it. It's just like holding a physical book uh, versus, you know, reading a book on your phone or something. You know, it's just they don't match up. You know, just certain things about turning that page and like having the full two page spread that just hits you in a way that uh, I think device and digital just doesn't have. Yeah, uh, if uh, you if you want to scroll through your comics, I'm not gonna shame you for it, but <laughs> please support your local comic book shop. Uh, so yeah, but definitely if if you especially if you can find somebody that you really like uh, as far as ownership and employees and stuff. Oh, yeah. Here in Columbus, Ohio, we have we're very fortunate that we have several very good comic stores. All of them. Uh, very, very great people, very good people working for them. Uh, Laughing Ogre, uh, World's Greatest Comics, Pack Com- Rat Comics, Comic uh, Town. Comic Town. Comic Town's good. Yeah. They always have good sales over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's, there's just, you know, innumerable, uh, comic book shops out there, and they would very much love to have your business and your community. And every time you have another person in that store, it just makes it feel more like home. So please support your local comic book shops if you can, when you can. And uh, without further ado, here's your new releases. Oh, no. Computer problems. All right, from Marvel, we have all new Guardians of the Galaxy number six. We have America, which you were alluding to earlier, number five. Uh, Astonishing X-Men number one. We have Captain America and the Avengers. We have Daredevil, number 24. We have Daredevil kills the Marvel Universe again, number two. Wait, Daredevil kills the Marvel Universe? Oh, excuse me. Deadpool. I missed number there. I was about to say. I just read like... Daredevil. My brain didn't. <laughs> it, like I said, it's been a long day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please forgive me. 
uh, Doctor Strange number 23, Invincible Iron Man number 9, Luke Cage number 3, Monsters Unleashed number 4, Miss Marvel number 20, uh, Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man number 2, Royals number 5, Secret Empire number 6, Secret Empire, Brave New World, number four. Spider-Man, 2099, number 25. Star Wars, Darth Maul, number five. Star Wars, Poe Dameron, number 17. The Amazing Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows, number nine. The Mighty Thor, number 21. Shout out from your phone (laughs) for uh, Spider-Man there. The Mighty Thor. Uh, Thor Ragnarok Prelude, number two. I'm guessing that's a movie tie-in. Uh, Totally Awesome Hulk, number 21, U.S. Avengers, number 8, Ultimates, number 9, and X-Men Gold, number 8. From IDW, we have Back to the Future, number 21, we have Clue, number 2, we have, uh, let's see here, a whole lot of variant copies. Popeye Classics, number 60, so many variants. (laughs) <laughs> and Weird Love, number 19. From DC, we have Aquaman, 26. Batman, 27. We have Batwoman, number 5. We have DC Comics Bombshells, number 31. Go get it. I love the artwork. Uh, Green Arrow, number 27. Green Lanterns, plural, number 27. Harley Quinn, number 24. Injustice 2, number 6. Love the Injustice comics. Read them. Please read them. <laughs> Uh, Even if you're not a fan of the games, please read the comics. They're so good. They're so good. And they're easy to find because they're digital first comics. So, of course, there's a million issues of them, and they're primarily sold digitally. So, great artwork, great stories. Pick them up. Uh, Justice League number 25. We have Justice League Essentials. Aquaman number one, Batman number one, Cyborg number one, Justice League number one, Superman number one, The Flash number one. I'm not familiar with what the Justice League Essentials series is. I'll have to check that out. Nightwing number 25, Super Sons, great comic series, especially if you got kids. Oh, yeah. Uh, Number six, I just love seeing the dynamics of the two (laughs) big heroes, you know, (laughs) their heirs just kind of arguing all the time. (laughs) Superman number 27. Uh, Wildstorm, which I love. I love Wildstorm. Check out Wildstorm. <laughs> number six. Uh, and Trinity, number 11. Uh, let's see if we got anything other than uh, variants from Dynamite. Doesn't look like it. Image Comics. Love Image Comics. Keep doing what you're doing. We have Bitch Planet, Triple Feature, number two, <laughs> which I have the number one for. We have Generation Gone, number one. We have Invincible, number 138, which is apparently getting close to its ending. Is that right? Uh, I, th- I believe the the creator uh, said he was looking for a final end for this book, so, and it's apparently coming up pretty quick, which is convenient because they just announced some uh, movie efforts in the works for Invincible. Oh, my God. Please let them do it right. <laughs> Get excited. Get so excited. Next, we have <laughs> Kill the Monitor, number two. We have Lazarus, X plus 66, number one. Not familiar with that one. Moonstruck, number one. Royal City, number five. And that rounds out. So from Dark Horse Comics, we have Aliens, Dead Orbit, number three. Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, season 11, number nine. Still going strong. Department H, number 16. Uh, Shaolin Cowboy, who will stop the rain. Rain spelled R E I G N. Of course. I haven't checked that one out. Number four. And from Valiant, we have a lot of variants. A lot of variants. Nothing but variants. All right. <laughs> Solid. You got lots of people like to do covers. And from Boom, uh, we have Adventure Time Comics number 13. We have Bill and Ted Save the Universe number two. Might have more from Power Rangers number 17. Uh, which I've heard is actually decent. Who who knew? I I mean, <laughs> and it, it feels like fan fiction, but they <laughs> somehow managed to make it good. All right, <laughs> and then we have Sisters of Sorrow number no, number one, and Victor Laval Destroyer number three, <laughs> and that rounds out our new releases. Uh, as always, for those not familiar. We uh, like to pick out a comic book cover of the week and a variant cover of the week. This week, 
our choice for regular cover of the week goes to Aquaman number 26. Aquaman. They nailed it. Uh, not so much recently, but uh, for New 52, they were nailing every cover. And I, I collected them because they're just bright, vivid, really cool looking covers. And this week, it, it kind of kind of hits me in the heart a little bit because it kind of feels like it's going back to that style again, at least a little bit, uh, yeah. from the kind of cartoony look it's had since Rebirth. And uh, this cover just features a really cool looking Mira with all the detailed scales and the water rushing around here, flying everywhere. Just a great cover, great cover art. I mean, uh, it'd be cool if the colors were a little bit vivider, but I mean, that's a, I mean, it's a great, great looking cover. And it comes from, I'm sorry, I'm going to destroy your name. Uh, uh, Stepan? Uh, S-T-J-E-P-A-N. Uh, Sajik. So uh, I'm guessing Stepan Sajik, hopefully. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go with that. <laughs> two thumbs up, great job. Keep doing what you're doing. And then for our variant cover of the week, we have the Astonishing X-Men number one. Stanley Lau cover, and this one features a really, really uh, cool-looking rogue and her <laughs> traditional partner in crime gambit in the background. <laughs> I'm not a not as big a fan of the gambit in the background. Some, something about his face just looks weird. <laughs> I, I, I think, think it's they, his nose. Yeah, I think they did, went a little too long. Yeah, uh, but rogue looks great, yeah. and uh, the the colors they use. Uh, mesh together really well and i think i think it has potential to be a really really great hanger f- to put on your wall oh yeah definitely pops or at least rogue does <laughs> so thanks again aquaman number 26 yeah. step in sajic <clears throat> and astonishing x-men number one stanley lau thank you for what you do and uh without further ado let's get into our uh topics yeah so for those of you not familiar with Hit the Books podcast, we uh, usually bring a topic to the table for each of us, and if we have a guest, our guest, and uh, discuss it out and see where we land on things, see if maybe we change each other's minds or maybe introduce each other to uh, new ideas or something else. Yeah. Uh, without further ado, Emery, what is your topic? My topic actually has to do with uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier, which was the uh, the video released by Marvel, titled Marvel Generations. And I think the topic that I'm going to discuss because of that video is the concept of legacy characters. Specifically, legacy characters like Miles Morales, or Kamala Khan, or Riri Williams, or... What's the other one? Amadeus Cho, actually, which really weird that they did that to Amadeus Cho since Amadeus Cho has been around for a while. This isn't a character that they just came up with to say, oh, we're going to make the Hulk, but like Asian and still have all of his mental faculties. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this is a character that had his own thing going for a while and then it's like they, they just sidelined him into just being another Hulk, which is weird. It's always weird when they do something like that. Um, like I could understand, like one of the characters that was a Hulk for like a while was the character Rick Jones. Uh, this is a guy who was actually partially responsible for Bruce Banner becoming the Hulk, because in the original comics, he was the one who was pushed out of the way. I've when- been having so much trouble keeping up with all the Hulks. It, I mean, it just their color. There's code. red, red Hulk, blue Hulk, <laughs> black Hulk, purple Hulk, girl gray Hulk. Hulk. You know, it's just, y- yeah, uh, yeah. It's just way too much, man. It, it's a lot to keep track of. I mean, and now we have uh, Peter Parker, Spider Man, Miles Morales, Spider Man. We have Silk, who I forget the real name of, and we have uh, Spider Gwen as well. Not to be confused with Gwen Poole. 
<laughs> because we have to have a version of everything. A Gwen version of everything. Yeah. Which is fine specifically for the Gwenpool part because that Gwen is not Gwen Stacy last I checked. Okay. This is just... I have not read them. I actually own the number one, number two up again in my collection. Yeah. Bagged and boarded, was going to frame it because I like the art. I had no interest in reading it, but I should probably <laughs> I should probably read it before I hang it up. I don't know. I'll give it a shot uh, it, and see, see yeah. if I like it. I'm sure it's I, fine. I, but. I'd say give Gwen pull a shot. My backlog is so huge. You, you yeah. Fans, <laughs> if, if you're a regular comic collector, you know what I'm talking about. It just accumulates and you never catch up, which will become a topic that I'll speak to later. Oh, yeah. Topic for another time. <laughs> <laughs> so but, go uh, ahead. Sorry to interrupt uh, you. Oh, no, you're good. Um, but yeah, uh, what has been commonly referred to on the internet as SJW or social justice warrior characters, where we have um, we have an Afghani, like by blood, but totally like New York raised new Ms. Marvel. Kamala Khan, which I'm fine with, or actually, I think, as I'm going to say for most of these characters, I'd be more fine with that character if they tried to be their own character. <laughs> um, and that's the thing that's been uh, kind of worrying me about Marvel lately. Is, Just uh, the throwing the same monikers onto different variations of the same character? Right. Right. The, For example, Miss Marvel, but we don't know which Miss Marvel we're referring to. Right. Spider Man. It, it's supposed six hundred Spider Man and right. Woman. You know. Yeah, and that's six hundred Spider Man time. Or six million Hulks, you know. <laughs> male, female of all races and Yeah. It, there, it, there's something to say. There's nothing wrong with being inclusive, but if you're gonna be inclusive, create new characters. Create something cool and unique that right. people can aspire to, not just rip off, you know the what i would say you know cis white standard whatever right you know i think the the biggest offender of this lately i should say uh would be riri williams or the uh basically the new female black tech genius iron man are, are we going with iron man even though this is a female is that the title of her book uh I, yeah her it is it the Invincible Iron Man series now stars Riri Williams. See, that's just silly. Just give her her own unique name, make her her own unique character, and give her her own unique book that people can support and happily enjoy. It's funny you mention that for her specifically because she did have her own name for a little while. Really? Uh, yeah. What was it? Ironheart. <laughs> See, that's cool. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's, no, cool. it's no different than, you know, Batwing or something, you know? Right. It's cool until you actually read the story. Uh, her backstory is probably the worst one I've read. Really? And I read America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, imagine for a second that you are trying to come up with a legacy character, basically someone to receive the torch that Tony Stark is about to pass. And... You keep the tech genius part, but you change the white part and make him black. You change the male part and make him female. And then you basically take away the whole, like, it, and this is the part that really killed me. Iron Man became Iron Man because he was basically a, a weapons, like, he was a merchant of death who ended up getting captured by his own customers, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he was captured, he had to find his own way out, and his finding his own way out was creating an Iron Man suit. Riri Williams becomes Ironheart because when she's, like, 10 years old, she gets patted on the head for, like, everything that she does. Even if it's, like, not even that good of an attempt but here's the thing she gets pissed at that i know it's, yeah, the, she... it's the trophy mantra the yeah trophy for everybody mantra yeah I don't know. and this is the one character who actually sees that as a negative it's like it's like i she literally says to her 
and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, sure. uh, like, I need for you to oppress me so that I can, you know, aspire to do something great. And it's like, but you're, you're good. You're good at things. And she's <laughs> like, still, oppress me. Say something. And haphazardly, her teacher says, okay, fine. You'll never be as good as Tony Stark. <laughs> That is her origin. So her origin is she wanted to have a chip on her shoulder, so she fished for a chip to have on her shoulder and then pursued that artificial chip on her shoulder. Yes. Yes. And aspired to be exactly like the character. (laughs) By aspire, I should correct you in saying she basically stole tech. And made her own suit from oh, even, it? Oh, even better. Even so, fucking better, So we're right? taking the female black version of Iron Man and making it so she couldn't create her own, but, but had, had to, to steal, steal it. it. Oh. This yeah, is, there's a problem, Marvel. Th- this is a villain origin story, I think not for, a hero origin story. <laughs> and I think that's a, a big problem with a lot of these things. I think for you know the kind of more casual comic fan that may not you know pick up these books and actually read them, right. they say... Oh, what's well, the problem, you know? We're just being more inclusive. They're just being more inclusive. Well, you read these things in the context, and there's not even a good context for them. In, in yeah. this case, apparently, uh, from what you're telling me, it's kind of an insulting kind of racist context. It, it's reverse racism. It's like... I mean, I mean, it's not even reverse racism. It's, you know, taking the black version of Iron Man and saying, well, you had to be a thief to get it, you know? You, could, <laughs> you couldn't just be brilliant, you know? Well, uh, here's the way that it's reverse. Instead of saying, like, oh, you had to do that. Oh, that's so dumb. They continue to pat her on the fucking head. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Oh, great. It's like, like, let's applaud her for trying? What the fuck? All right, just to play devil's advocate for a moment, what would you propose as the solution? How do you introduce new, interesting, diverse characters... Okay. With without them being kind of pushed out of the way by the popularity of established characters, and without using their monikers, for example, Bat, whatever, or Iron, whatever. Right. Um, I think the the thing that I would do for that is, and I'm gonna take an example, pre existing example. Sure. Um, so the current Ghost Rider that has comics being written uh it's uh robbie reyes which if any of you have seen agents of shield uh that's the ghost writer that you're acquainted with um even though there were others that came up before (laughs) johnny blaze and but uh with that character what i would do is instead of at least for like the first six issues uh instead of like just giving him the name outright I would basically not give him a name, give him maybe similar powers, maybe tweak some of it. Uh, actually, the way that they tweaked it in, like his like his introduction run, was actually really cool. Um, but yeah, make him different. Uh, or, like we keep saying, you could just make a completely original character. <laughs> um. Or even brush off characters that are original that just haven't been haven't used. Seen, yeah, haven't seen haven't the light seen of day. Haven't seen a good writer, you know, right. really take over them. For example, I always bring this up, Static Shock. <laughs> shock is the shit. Static is the shit. Give right. him, I mean, New 52, give them credit. They made him a book and tried to pursue it, but the writing team wasn't great. The art team wasn't that great. Uh, I'm sure they're great in their their own right, but there was just so many books they were trying to push. I'm sure they were rushing through everything. Uh, yeah. Even Mr. Terrific. Mr. Terrific is a cool book and a cool character, but his name's kind of goofy, so no one wants to pick up his book, you know? Right. And he's never really featured in the animated stuff. So I think, like, <laughs> just those two examples alone are just two awesome characters that could add diversity to the kind of, you know, whitewashed, you know, standard of the past without kind of, you know, 
shoving a Batman something on them or shoving a Spider-Man something on them or shoving an Iron Man something on them or you right. know, without making them a rip off of another character or without kind of shoehorning characters in or killing off established beloved characters to replace them with black Captain America, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's actually, uh... <laughs> so there, there's ways to do it that can, that not only will be critically accepted, but would be probably appreciated more by your comic fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's the thing that I think the the publishers, or maybe specifically the editor-in-chief at Marvel, has just, he's gotten it wrong. His idea, or at least this is what's been communicated through all of the titles that have been released under his supervision, mm -hmm. uh, his idea so far has been to basically put out the same title character change the character a bit um so captain marvel ms marvel um the the captain americas uh, iron man now uh thor even like these are all characters who have had a replacement come in take their name for a little bit up until you know the original comes back for some reason sure or what have you what should have happened is each one of those characters should have had their own set of abilities or powers. Mm -hmm. They should have had their own stigma or bullshit that makes them, like, that makes their struggle their own. Sure. And, they, again, just original fucking characters. It's like, I, we already had a girl Thor. Her name is Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. we already had a black iron man his name is war machine <laughs> yep. we've already had a hispanic spider-man his name is spider-man 2099 <laughs> like these are things that have already been done yeah. but for some reason we're revisiting this idea but doing it kind of different yeah. and also we're not giving these characters any struggle or that's, depth yeah, yeah that's the big thing that you were saying yeah Not... it's like they don't have the thing that makes spider-man spider-man or iron man or captain america yeah. is that they all have the struggle uh iron man is struggling with being a good dude after the fact that he was like one of the worst dudes ever mm-hmm spider-man is struggling with making ends meet because he's like permapoor <laughs> Like, he, he will never have money until, you know, they let him out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> One day. Yeah. One day. Uh, Captain America always has the issue of being out of touch. Out of date, out of touch, a little too honest for yeah. his own good. Uh, okay. Out of time. Yeah. It's like, he comes from a different time. And Thor. Thor has the issue of humility. Like, his biggest issue has always been, I am the mighty Thor, and I am a god! <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm Donald Blake, and I'm kind of immortal. So, um, yeah, now I get it. Now I get why you people are so feeble. Yeah. Um, For sure. I, and, and you're right. I think uh, with, and with a lot of these characters, there is kind of a kind of handout Hey, look at this character who's kind of a new character, but not really a new character, but they're a different it's race like, or they're a different, you know, gender, they're, you know, but different their name sexual is preference. Man. Yeah. So by the title and because you like Spider-Man, right? They're, and they're the best and the strongest and the smartest and they they've never had any struggle or issue or complaints. And uh wait, we, we Oh crap. I think we figured out that they need the struggle and the complaint. <laughs> But uh, I mean, uh, I will give some credit to some some that are done very well. Uh, I th I want to say his name is Simon Baz. It's been a while since I read the Green Lantern and stuff. But uh, for Simon Baz, they made him a uh, mi Middle Eastern guy uh, who lived in Dearborn, Michigan. Got framed for you know, kind of kind of lived in a crappy part of Car Town. You know, for those yeah. familiar with the Detroit area, and uh, got framed for a crime that he didn't commit and. Uh, particularly one that might tie him to uh 
terrorism. <laughs> uh, a bomb in a van that was rigged to blow that yeah. he could not stop driving. Kind of a, a speed issue. Yeah, a speed type of thing. Yeah, the but, uh, uh, unfortunate <laughs> perk of being born a Muslim yeah. in the United States. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, they did him pretty well, and... Uh, he had a lot of depth. He had to, he had to deal with some character struggle. Like he he hid his appearance because he didn't want anybody to threaten his family, kind of like Kyle Rayner does. And whereas you know, John Smith or not John Smith, John Stewart just uh, kind of rocks it. You know, <laughs> John Stewart gives no fucks. Let, lets it all hang out. He doesn't care who sees him. You know, uh, and it's cool because it gives him a little bit of a dynamic. But then you still have the issue of. Well, he's a Green Lantern, and they're all Green Lanterns, and then they introduce the female Green Lantern from another <laughs> universe, and <laughs> now we have, yeah. what, six Green Lanterns from Earth? The only reason that works for Green Lanterns is because that's a police force. Yeah. Basically, they recruit anyone, people. Yeah, yeah. anyone can join, especially if you're from Earth. <laughs> so here's here's an idea. I, th- I think it would be a hard sell for comic companies... Uh, just because it might rub some people the wrong way. But I think what a cool idea would be is to kind of have, just take a year. I mean, you're already trying to fill every year with these stupid events. Yeah. Stop doing events. Just take a year. And you know, it, this could be just one series or it could be like a whole like new line. Create some new characters, say, 10 years in the future. That's not too far. So the world's... Yeah. Pretty pretty similar, but there's maybe some little advancements here or there, whatever. Make right. it like 10, 20 years in the future. Make it so that the current uh, beloved characters, you know, are from, you know, the 70s or the 80s. And that was their heyday. And they're kind of aging out of the job or some of them are dying or whatever. Yeah. And these and new heroes needs to need to rise up and take their place. In order to defend it. And I know that similar things have been done in the past. But I think they still made the key characters. Particularly for DC. Where they had Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Just kind of step in again. And then I know 52 was kind of like that. Where they had the old men come in and take over for our current beloved characters. (laughs) In the opposite (laughs) direction. But I would think you could do something where you have. uh, Not quite like Batman Beyond type of thing. But like. You know, very recent future where the regular superheroes are much older or dead, and you have brand new characters with brand new powers, with brand new origins that can be more diverse, that can have less kind of corny origin stories, that do have more of a realistic, grounded uh, side story and life that you can characterize and not be limited by uh, continuity and that sort of thing. And I think that would be cool. And then... For the ones that people really gravitate to or really like, you can like kind of pick and choose the ones you want to keep and make their own books going forward and just establish them as beginners in, yeah. in the new universe. So in the future, they're the they're the new Justice League, they're the new you know Trinity or whatever. Right. But in our present, you know, after that year of the series is gone or the you know event, whatever you want to call it, has been done. Yeah. You bring them in as beginners, you know. Just for example, I'll just, you know, uh, <laughs> just make up a stupid name like Jackhorn. I don't know, Jackhorn, hero of the universe. I don't know, but Jackhorn, <laughs> Jackhorn, Jackoff. <laughs> he he that got sounds it. like a villain. Name. He, he got it. <laughs> That's his superpower. Everybody thinks he's a villain, so he can just infiltrate any enemy, <laughs> any, any evil organization. It is I, uh, Jack Horn Jackoff. <laughs> Jack Horn Jackoff. Uh, you know what I'm here to do. <laughs> <laughs> but Jack Horn Jackoff, the great hero, gets his start a year after that series where he is the big dog in town. Yeah. With the current continuity and becomes a new book that people can love and support. And you can have the more inclusive characters, the people that are homosexual or the people that are uh, a different race than the typical, you know cisgendered white guy you can have uh you know female characters you can have transgender characters whatever you want you know what give it a shot just give them depth give them something that you have alludes to some kind of struggle right whether it's character struggle or 
uh, actual villainous struggle. And, you know, don't try to proxy on to some other character, whether it be Batman, Superman, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Deadpool, X-Men, whatever. Make them unique. Make them, uh, you know, something completely different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's... um... The thing that's kind of funny about that is uh, when it came to the movies, specifically for Marvel, uh, there was a while when it was very noticeable that people were getting origin story fatigue. Yeah, I'm sure. But that's kind of what makes these characters great. It's like you get to see them. It, it's like watching a birth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like there's this this thing that happens, like for Batman, it's like, he watches his parents die in the movies for like the 12th time. Yeah. <laughs> and to uh, Snyder's credit, I think he did a pretty good job with the, the, the Batman origin, you know, parents dying thing. It's basically the opening credits. Yeah. It's and like people he know the story, but he did. He abridged the hell out of that part. Yeah. And he, and he did it in a way that was, you know, very artsy fartsy and very cool and, you know, they kept your interest and it wasn't like, oh, not this again, you know, because it was right. so short, you know, it passed you by and it was visually cool to look at. And it sent the message. He witnessed his parents being murdered in the street, you know, right as, at 10 years old. It's going to traumatize you, you know. Right. And I think the the amazing thing with that, the one that... credit I'll give BVS. Yeah. <laughs> you, everybody gets one. Um Secretly, I like that movie. So, <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, the the thing that impresses me about that opening credit scene is that that opening credit scene is a flashback. Yeah, like it, it's not like a this is where we start the story. No, this is like there's literally like voiceover work from ben affleck as the character yeah thing like, i mean it got a little like heavy-handed watching, when he had yeah. the dream and the well and stuff that was, I was like okay we don't need this this could have been cut out completely but <laughs> it but, could have but yeah the the fact that they went the route of like oh it was like every time i go to sleep i see my parents murdered again um that as a thing i think would and still like with the upcoming batman movie i don't know how soon that's coming out but with that movie upcoming uh there's potential there yeah there's potential there to make that like moment not just like a thing that happened in the past but that's a thing that unfortunately due to his obsessive nature he relives that every time he goes to sleep yeah and I mean that obsessive nature shows through his character in every other way, whether it's his yeah. detective work or whatever. You know, he's constantly <laughs> you bump into your mic. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so he's not blind, folks. He's he hurt his eyes, so he's yep. he's wearing some glasses to cover his eyes a little bit. Why I had this here. Uh but yeah, you're you're totally right. Uh I think origin stories at least some aspect of them need to be there to give the characters a little bit more depth, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit more insight into their character. Well, I think we covered the topic pretty good. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, long, long story short, uh, TLDR. Um, please stop being lazy. Stop being create, lazy. Create new characters and then give them the proper support, whether it's the writer, the the artist, the cover artist, I am going to say it's the writer and give them the longevity again, you know. They're not people aren't going to be picking up these books that they've never heard of, you know, after 2, 3, 4 months, you know, four issues, five issues in. Right. Give them, you know, a year, two years to be established, maybe put them in some kind of animated show or movie or something. Give them some kind of outlet to be recognized and seen and heard. Right. At at the end of the at the end of the day, make these characters worth it. That's what we want. <laughs> and they won't have to depend on those monikers of Batman, Spider-Man, whatever else, you know. Right. All right. Uh, topic two. Thanks for bringing that. Of course. Uh, my topic uh, c- kind of relates to it. How can comic book stores and the comic book industry as a whole 
uh, do more to cater to their co- customers and still m- manage to increase their profits and survive in this industry. We live in an age where everything is coming digitally. And whether it's your MP3s off iTunes or your, your videos through streaming services, uh, your video games are even starting to become more of a streaming service than a physical purchase. Yeah. Uh, books are read on Kindles and computer screens now, you know. Uh, I do think there's a little bit of reverting back to physical media because people are getting a little... I think over-screened. A little over-screened, yeah, getting those, you know, tension headaches from looking at bright blue screens all day, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, you, you see it with vinyl. You see it with visible uh, physical book collections. You see it with uh, uh, physical, like, Blu-ray purchases and stuff. Blu-ray is still going strong, even though digital clearly rules the medium. And uh, with video games, you have your collector's editions and stuff. Oh, yeah. And displays that come with them and stuff like that. So there is a little bit of a resurgence for physical media, but I think most people would probably agree that digital media is going to be the media of the future, and uh, physical media is probably going to struggle a little bit here on out. And for comics in general, comics have always kind of had a niche nature to them, uh, while people definitely you know consume the cartoons and the video games and uh you know the movies uh the comics themselves uh are usually excluded to kind of a more urban you know city environment where you do have a comic book store nearby that you can go to and even then just because of space because of how fragile they are because of how short they are yeah compared to their cost uh it's it's hard for people to get into comics even though the comics themselves i think have a much better content than the movies, video games, uh, and other forms of media really provide. Uh, so I have a few ideas. No, oh, yeah. uh, I think the biggest problem is the size of the comics themselves. They're uh, what? Do, what do you mean by the size? How many pages? How long it takes to get through a comic? Mm, uh, okay. I mean, if. It's great to have great art, but if you if your comic is almost exclusively art and not as much writing and dialogue and narration, mm. you can flip through even the thickest of new comics, you know, and 10, 15 still, minutes. Have it still feel and, empty. And, yeah, and still see that, have it appreciated for the art, you know. Yeah. And then on the opposite spectrum, you know, you can have all the narration you want, but then it just makes the comic just so boring. <laughs> It's and more like a book. <laughs> usually it's kind of contrived. It's like seeing a, mil- a movie that has no content but a ton of filler, you know. And even then, it's still, you know, 25, 30 minutes to get through and really appreciate, depending on how quick or slow you read, you know. I think that's the major problem. And I understand, especially when your companies are producing this many comics and how much time it takes to create the artwork. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, those artists, they work their butts off, you know, whether it's the, the penciler, the color artist, the, you know, the, the ink, the ink artist, you know, all that stuff just takes so much time, even with the digital assistants these days. Yeah. Like there, there are teams, yeah. there are like individual teams sure. that handle each and every single issue of comic books any person has ever purchased. Absolutely. Yeah. I think again. I think one thing they could do is instead of releasing a ton of different issues of comics every single week where you have all these issues with production costs, where you have all these issues with uh, uh, actual physical outlets trying to carry all these you know extra issues that don't get sold for whatever reason or get damaged or whatever else. Yeah. I think what the companies could do is release them much less frequently. But stagger them so you have, say, you have the equivalent of, say, half half a year's run of a Batman series. And okay. So you have two Batman series. You have All-Star Batman. Like, right now, they have All-Star Batman and regular Batman. Yeah. And then Detective Comics, if you want to include that. So for still have the yearly series, but release them staggered monthly. Yeah. Uh, and just have, like... This month is going to be Batman, 
uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, and you're going to get each each of these weeks is going to be six issues of whatever. And then the next month is six issues of, you know, Aquaman, uh, Nightwing, and Justice League, you know, whatever else. Something along those lines. Or what they could do instead of doing weekly issues where every week is a new issue, just uh, do a monthly series where you have a monthly release schedule and everything's going to be that same. Like right now, DC DC is really pumping out a lot of stuff. And credit to them, they reduced their cover price. And their, their covers are, most of them are about half price now. But I think two ninety nine, which is far cry from the almost six dollars they were charging, you know, about two years ago for New Fifty Two. Oh yeah. So that that's a huge props to DC. I'm glad they did it because it does take that pain, that sting a little bit. Because you got to think if if you're buying on average like ten comics a week, five five to ten comics a week. Oh. And they're yeah. all four or five bucks. That adds up really really quick. Yeah. Especially oh, yeah. if you're on a tight budget, you know. And you, need, you know, you want to consume this media, and you love this media, and you want to frame and protect this media, or whatever. Right. Uh, it, like that. It would be nice to be able to do that affordably, sure. but unfortunately, there are some companies, like Marvel, where their printing has become a little weird, and mm-hmm. like it's, it's not even like the same type of paper that they're printing on anymore. Yeah, it's it's almost like magazine, like tearing yeah. paper. It's not good. Yeah. I'm it, not a fan of what Marvel's done. Yeah, it's really weird the type of material that they've chosen to use. Yeah, it's but, not sturdy whatsoever. Yeah, but for some reason, like they've continued to have their issues be like five, or in some cases six dollars. Yeah, that's as, out that's outrageous yeah. for, you know, something that's gonna entertain you for fifteen, twenty minutes and if the cover art's good, maybe you can hang it up, but probably not. Yeah. Not, like, 99% of the time, that's not the case. It's like adding another bill to the other numerous amount of bills that yeah. we as adults have to deal with. I mean, Unless even even child. kids. Even yeah. kids. Like, you're going to go to your parents and beg for, you know, $100 a month <laughs> so you can buy your comics? Like, there's, <laughs> there's no, no parent in the right mind would be like, all right, son. Here, all right, daughter. Take take it's take a take a hundred dollars yeah. <laughs> plus whatever else I'm paying to feed you and clothe you and put a house yeah. a roof over your head and you know whatever else and spend this exclusively on those expensive comic books. Yeah, and it really getting. pushes kids, especially out of comics, because they just can't afford it. You know, right. there's so many alternatives that are far cheaper. You know, whether it be television, whether it be streaming services, whether it be video games, where they can enjoy their comic book worlds without having to deal with the cost. And and another big thing is piracy, you know. Yeah, that, that's most another peop- thing. Most people want to support their comic book artists or their you know, uh, the writers, whatever else, their companies. But some people just have no option because you know, unless they want to do everything a hundred percent digital, you know, on this little phone screen through Comicsology or through Marvel Unlimited or whatever, uh, they're gonna pirate it. Because yeah. they don't want to pay six bucks for this little thing, you know, when they could get it for free. Yeah, you know this thing that uh, on average is only and I'm, what twenty two yeah. pages. And I'm not condoning piracy whatsoever. Please support your comic books uh, and, and your creators. Please, uh, especially your comic book store owners, because those those people work really hard and uh, they deal with a lot of crap, especially from suppliers. Uh, but yeah, I I think I think doing some kind of thing where you have you know four, five, six issues in a book. But you only release them, you know, once every three, four months, five months, whatever, maybe maybe twice a year, something like that. Yeah. Not only are the books sturdier because they're thicker, so you have less damage in transit, you have less damage from suppliers, you know. Kids can kind of handle these a little, you know, awkwardly and not have to worry about destroying them, you know. Right. We, we already do this thing where we le- release volumes and, you know. That's where most comic shops make their prior, the primary form of their you know money is from those volumes, those collected editions. Oh yeah. Why not just do that? Just make collected editions, or every year have like, you know, a handful of artists, you know, and writers write a twelve-year book, and then every month, you know, you have two or three twelve-year books coming out. Uh, it would be much easier for people to manage. And I understand there's the traditionalists that want to have, you know, the little super thin, super displayable ones. But I, as a person that displays them myself, 
I wouldn't mind if they were that much thicker if I got that much more content for my buck, you know? Yeah. Make make the thicker book. It brings down your production costs because now you don't have to make a hundred different cover variants of the same thing, you know? <laughs> Uh, God knows Marvel and DC are going to make more variants regardless. Right. So why not just like be like, okay, we want 10 variants of this book, and they're all going to be limited to some effect, and then the primary one's going to be this, and we're going to have four to six issues worth of content in, in this book, and we'll release it in February, and then we'll have four to six issues of content in this book, and it'll be released in, you know, October, you know, something like that. And then... uh. Another big criticism I have with uh, comic books in, in general is quit putting the advertisements <laughs> and the barcode on the front. It, for the love of God, it, please stop. It, yeah. Because for collectors like me and people that want to appreciate these for the art that they are, you have this big block of barcode blocking you know from the, the view of the comic. I mean, you, most comic book stores... When the comics are brand new, they're not bagged and boarded like this. They're just loose leaf on on the shelves. So it's not a big deal for them to put it on its back and scan the back. Right. It's really not. It it would be no problem. And then when they're old, they usually put a price tag on there because they're not going to sell old comics for the same price that they were originally advertised at. So that's another big thing. I, I think the recent Marvel ones have been the biggest... Yeah, I don't have any recent Marvel ones up here. But I think the recent Marvel ones have been the biggest uh, committers of this crime. Because they have the huge Marvel, red Marvel bar. And then they have the barcode. And then they have you know an advertisement here. And then they have their main logo here. And at the end, you can't see any of the art. You can't appreciate any of the cover art. And that's what i love that's what catches my eye at the store right uh, it's and, like they're <clears throat> kind of slapping you in the, in the face yeah. with all of the branding it's sure. like, just so you know what you're buying and so that the guy at the front can actually look at the cover i guess while they're scanning it why can't they put this on the back absolutely why can't they put put all the, of that put, and there the are back. companies that do it well i think uh uh not vertigo but i think image does it i think image does it where they put the barcodes on the back uh which is great, you know, because yeah. then then you can take it home. You can frame it. I have a number one issue of Nailbiter signed by the creators, and I love the cover because it doesn't have a stupid barcode taking up half the front. It doesn't have <laughs> Image Comics, you know, taking up half, the, you know, the logo taking up half the cover art. You know, I right. want to see the cover art. I want to see this fantastic creation that somebody has worked long and hard to create for me. Right, uh, right. That should be the point of getting a variant cover on the local level. Uh, this is a big criticism of local comic book stores, especially when they're uh, taking, selling kind of older comics that they pulled off the loose leaf shelves. Uh, price tags. Why, don't put the price tags on the front. <laughs> I understand that this is a cover and it's not going to bother the actual comic itself, but now I have to deal with the added cost of either rebagging this completely or. I got to sit here and try to peel it off. And usually what happens if you try to peel it off, you don't get it all off. The glue stays on there. And then when you put it back in the box, that glue gets on everything. And your fingernails can sometimes puncture through and actually damage the comics sometimes. And even if it doesn't damage the comics, you're still going to see the imprints from where your fingernails were trying to scrape off this stupid glue from the stickers. It's, it's That's just bad practice. Th- you can put it on the back. It's cardboard. <laughs> like nobody's nobody's gonna care if there's a price tag on the back of a bagged and boarded comic. I don't I don't understand. And you can still look at it and see, okay, this is my price. Click, 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 click. Here's your total. <laughs> you know? There's no reason to put the price on the front. Not only does it take away from the impact of when you pull it out of the box and you go, Wow, that's some cool artwork, but no, we got these price tags and bargain stickers all over the front, you know? Don't do that. It's just it's, it's just bad practice and it I is. I really wish comic book store owners would stop doing that. Another big thing is double tape your bags. This one's good. <clears throat> double tape your comics. Please put one on each side. Don't put one just the one in the middle cuz then this plastic gets all up shoveled and 
torn up and then like the it's, top of the comic will crisp. the top of the comic will get exposed and damaged and for collectors like me who do treasure the quality of the comic who do treasure you know having something that you can hang on the wall and have something look you know impressive uh it's a big issue so please local comic book star owners uh please take better care of your comics uh <clears throat> a lot of uh problems i see locally as well as with the loose leaf comics is sometimes the employees they're just not paying attention and when they they get those comics you know for people like me that really do look for quality that are looking for ones that aren't torn that don't have a bunch of like eraser smears on them or something you know <clears throat> or you know cardboard smearing on them or something you know d- take care of these comics when you, you stock them i understand you want to work fast but it's a comic book store Unless right. you're in New York City, you're probably <laughs> not having that much business at the point that you're stocking the comics. Take your time, you know, put them on the tray or the, you know, whatever you display them on, the cardboard, the display panels, whatever, and do it properly. Don't bend all the corners, shoving them down in there because you want to fit more so you don't have to restock them in an hour. You know, just take your time. Don't be lazy. You know, you'll you will sell more. If and I, this is true from my experience. I I go to two comic book stores primarily because they do take better quality care of their comics. For me, it's World's Greatest Comics and Laughing Ogre here in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, not to dismiss the other ones. The other ones, some of them are it's a location issue, but some of them it's genuinely they just don't take good care of the comics they store and they stock. And when I go looking for something, you know, my only options are three issues of a damaged one and a variant cover I don't want, you know? <laughs> yeah. I So that's that's a big thing for me. Uh, I think one other thing is continuity. Uh, events are fine. Events are great. I and, and when they tie into other comics, it's cool to see those little cameos and see how they affect it. You know, like Night, uh, Night of the Owls with Batman was great. Uh, Death of the Family uh yeah uh uh what was it called future uh, future's end uh batman eternal you know all these different tie-ins that are pr- pretty cool um a throne of atlantis like uh, again i'm speaking for dc here because oh, yeah. that's what i'm familiar with yeah. but yeah. they're cool it's it's great to have those tie-in comics but number of them and uh, like in terms of events for example if you have a tie-in comic death of the family where you have nightwing uh, Batman and Robin, Batman, Detective Comics, uh, Catwoman, God. Batgirl, Batwoman, Batwing. <laughs> that's even a, Batwing showed up. That's <laughs> for, for 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 Night of the Owls or Court of the Owls. Yeah, <laughs> they included All Star Western comics. There what? was an All Star Western tie-in. <laughs> Which again, I don't have a problem with tie-ins. It's cool to see those side oh stories. Oh my god! But please number them in a way that people can read them in order. You know, if issues thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of Batman is going to be the tie-in, but then only issue seventeen and eighteen of Catwoman is going to be the tie-in. Where do those timelines sync? You know, because two issues of Catwoman are they at the same time as the Batman ones or not? You know. For people that are trying to get them, especially on backlog, you really don't know oh, where these are put in the yeah. time. Like I recently went back and tried to read like all the tie-ins for uh, uh, Black Hand. What's the Green Lantern event? Uh, Darkest Night. Yeah, Blackest Night. A uh, Blackest Night. That's it. Yeah. I was trying. I have pretty much all the issues, and it's great having the artwork and stuff. But as far as continuity goes, I have no idea where the tie-ins fit in the timeline. <laughs> It's so difficult. Number them. So be like, you know, issue 13, 14 of Batman are the first and second issues of the timeline. The Nightwing 14 is the third issue of the timeline. And then Batman and Robin 15 is the, you know, fourth comic of the timeline. Then Batman 15 is the fifth comic of the timeline. Yeah, put, this particular put, issue. Put some kind of event numbering in addition to the issue numbering. Yeah. So that fans can keep track. And it, Comixology, shout out to Comixology. They actually have a setting where, like, you can read the comic and then it recommends the next one in the chronological order, which is awesome. I oh love that. God. 
But again, <laughs> there's no physical alternative for this. Right. And when I want the physical yeah. copies, it really ruins the experience for me, not knowing what's going on and why things are out of place. And I, when I read things out of oil, order, I spoil things for myself, you know? Right. And things like, that could have been, you know, a much bigger impact event. Yeah. that I mean, there's the that feeling where you're kind of lost. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the feeling where you're just trying to read the main story. And you feel like you have to do homework in order to get, like, the whole experience. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that that was the biggest thing. I wanted to read the Civil War II comics. I wanted yeah. to see what was going on. But oh. it's just so daunting going back and trying to figure out, okay, where do I start? Which tie-ins happened when? What's the timeline of this event, you know? So that's a, the big issue. And I, my, probably my last improvement here... Um. Well, maybe two. <laughs> All right, this one's a small one. Uh, comic book stores, please don't display your new comics in the windows where oh. the sunlight is going to destroy the colors and then oh, have these faded, yeah. nasty-looking comics Sun, yeah. advertising your business. Sun bleaching is a thing. It, don't it, let that happen. There's a place that's on in the short north here in Columbus that sells comics, you know, old comics, and they always do that. And it drives oh. me crazy because they have comics that I would very much treasure and want to buy because they are good comics. They put them in their window to advertise. Yeah. But then a day or two in the sunlight and they're destroyed. They're ruined. You, you, the cover is absolutely ruined. It just hurts. And it, it really does like hurt my heart. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, uh, this place will remain nameless. But uh, yeah, if you're hearing this and you think it might be you, it's probably you. Yeah. So please don't do this. Uh and then my my last biggest thing is I wish that uh, companies, I think the smaller companies like Image and Dark Horse do a good job of staying away from this. But for the bigger companies, DC, Vertigo, uh, Marvel, please don't feel the need to stick to this same continuum. They, this whole mixing up with Rebirth and the what happened after Secret Wars or whatever. Uh, yeah. Just, you don't have to tie these all into a universe or a continuum. Please just allow your writers and your artists to come up with an original idea or a cool story for a character and create their own universe surrounding it if they want or borrow a universe that is already in existence if they want to. And you can do whatever you want. Like like I said, I want you to notate the the order of the events. You could also notate, you know, the world that these comics are in if you want to or you can just create a new story you know i would very much be i would be much more interested in a storyline uh featuring a uh, superman or nightwing or a batman and kind of a slightly different universe you know than new 52 or rebirth than what they're doing with rebirth right now which is just mushing them all together and going Ugh. hey we got the best of each world that you wanted and we killed off the ones you didn't like <laughs> <laughs> there you go and now nothing makes sense and these characters all have interactions with each other that don't make sense <laughs> this know? is what you wanted right <laughs> so i it just it just reeks of desperation to me yeah uh, like the you know how they kind of adopted oh let's make a million variants every month you know <laughs> So to the point where they're no longer special. Um, Going back to the point that you just made, as far as not being so beholden to a continuity that yeah. your writing basically suffers. Sure. Um, there's actually a really good, and this is from Marvel, I know, surprising. Uh, there is a really good example of how not being so beholden to that can actually give way to a really entertaining great story um gambit versus deadpool or deadpool v gambit i don't know which one came first in the order sure. I'm, I'm assuming alphabetical so deadpool v gambit how about that um <laughs> this was a story not tied to or beholden to any particular timeline. Mm -hmm. This is just a basic story. Spoiler alert. Deadpool runs into Gambit at some point. Uh, the story is basically what happens when we take these two characters, uh, set them on a heist, and 
you know, th- see whether or not they either kill each other or someone else mm-hmm. or what have you. We're j- we're just gonna let the story go go where it goes, <laughs> and it's amazing. It's basically the the movie Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, but with Deadpool and Gambit in it. Oh, that sounds awesome! <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and it's completely independent of what was going on in the Marvel universe at the time, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. There is no, there is no mention yeah. of where in the timeline it is. It just sure. says at some point, basically, yeah. this this thing happened. That's uh, great. Hil- hilariously, I'll just give you guys how the the thing starts off. The two of them run into each other in line for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Were and, they in costume too? Yes, <laughs> they were both in costume. One, two. They end up reminiscing about the last time they ran into each other, and it. Oh my god, the, the most <laughs> hilarious heist I've ever seen in my life. That's great. Oh yeah, yeah. Th- this is that kind of potential is there for every single comic book character, yeah. but because continuity has been made like the really big deal because Marvel is winning at movies right now. Yeah. Um there's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure sure. to yeah. create something that's interconnected and interwoven and all tied together and there's like a specific timeline where all of these things happen in a specific order. Absolutely. But you don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. Just because it worked for Marvel <clears throat> At one point doesn't mean that it's still working for them yeah. or that it, it would even work for DC or Image or Boom or what have you. Yeah. Like, they, there are no rules. Yeah. So uh, just to wrap up my point here and uh, my 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 hope for future improvements. And, you know, I, I hope I'm, it's not just my entitled comic book fandom going, you should make it easier for me. You should make it better for me. You should make it cheaper for me. It's not good enough. You know, it's easier, not the case at better, all. Better, cheaper. Yeah, you know, I realize faster. that these these writers, these producers, these uh, artists, all work so incredibly hard to produce these. You know, even in the local comic book stores and their employees work their butt off and put their butts on the line, especially financially, to run their comic business and create a, a nice community, an awesome community uh, of comic book fans in their local towns or cities. So uh, all respect due to them. But these these solutions I'm putting forth uh, and just brainstorming, I don't think are too incredibly extreme and I think would probably increase business uh, by a great margin or at the very least make the, the barrier to entry much, much lower for new fans and kids. Yeah, uh, which should be the goal. I, either... <laughs> Make your comics, you know, significantly th- thicker with more content. And I don't mean overwork your staff to the point where everything is crap, the art is crap, the writing's crap, because they're trying to just get it out the door. Yeah, I like mean, if it, if it's thicker, make, you take more time. Yeah, take more time. Take more time off in between, you know, series or whatever connected issues, or or just release the whole year's entry or half a year entry or event together. You know, if you have Say, for example, Throne of Atlantis. You really don't need a whole lot of introduction other than, you know, the New 52 en- en- entry comics, you know? Yeah. Be like, this is the universe. It's the New 52 universe. Uh, we're going to have Aquaman. We're going to have a Superman. We're going to have a Wonder Woman. We're going to have Justice League and then Justice League International or whatever the case may be. And we're going to number it, you know, one, two, three, four, five in chronological order. <laughs> <laughs> each each part of it is not necessarily going to be Aquaman, you know. It may be Aquaman, 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 the others, Justice League, Justice League, Aquaman, whatever. Right. And, and just re- release them all, you know, in some kind of collected volume. And I, I understand if you want to do that, you can just sit there and wait. But think about how much cost you can save by not producing these super fragile, super expensive individual comics that just... Yeah, aren't sustainable. They, you know, they, there are solutions here, and it doesn't even have to be like once a year. It can be once every two months, or once every three months, or something like that. Right. You know, and that would give you an opportunity 
to create something that people can buy and feel like they're getting their money's worth. You know, when you're spending five, six dollars on a on a twenty page comic, you know, thirty page comic, you don't feel like you're getting your money's worth and you you feel like you read through it unless you really love that cover art and you're gonna display it in your home, you really feel like you're getting kind of worked over a little bit, you know? Yeah, shafted. <laughs> and that, it, unless you can make these, I mean, if they were a dollar a piece, I know that's that that's probably not realistic. I don't know the financials behind the production and the sourcing and everything. That's probably not a realistic option. But if the comics were this thin as they are right now, and they were a dollar a piece, maybe two dollars for the really thick you know 100 issue comic or you know two dollars for the really really super popular big ones that have the big events or whatever justice league or something yeah if you have a team book i think a team book would warrant two dollars maybe because they have to draw so many more characters and the writers have to develop so many more characters well if they are maintaining the same continuity they have to kind of pick and choose from each comic so either make it significantly cheaper at least for the physical copies because the 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 owner is taking all the risk when, yeah when it comes to owning that that comic gets damaged it's gone your investment's gone whereas digital you buy that you have that pretty much forever on your account you know whether it's comiXology or amazon or whatever the the app is uh so either make them significantly cheaper or release them a little less frequently and make them thicker uh for events events are fine but please uh give us some kind of chronological information so we know exactly where to start where to go through and where to end so we get the full force and effect of the story um don't feel beholden to continuity if you don't have to if it's not an event there really isn't a huge reason other than the occasional cameo or the occasional winking at the audience statement, you know? (laughs) Oh, I hear Asriel's not doing too hot. Wink. Yeah. Based (laughs) on the recent event. Wink. Other than that (laughs) moment of like, oh, I get what he's referencing. There, there really isn't that big of an I- impact for it, you know? Right. Um, let writers create their own individual stories and their own individual context for it. And if you want, like, put boundaries. Be like, okay, for these main issue comics, you have the freedom to write your own story. But these very kind of flexible barriers say, all right, you can't make Batman, you know, something other than a superhero. You can't make, uh, you can't make Nightwing a secret agent. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, Grayson was actually fine. It was just kind of a goofy presence. Uh, but there there are ways around this where you don't have to feel beholden to continuity and you don't have to feel like you have to force all these events to make things try to make sense when one writer tries to go off in one direction and one writer doesn't want to go that direction. Uh, and then locally, comic book store owners... Don't display your comics and your volumes in the front window. You know, get posters if you want. Great. People will buy posters all day long. But don't put comics themselves in the windows because you will damage them. Please stop putting the stickers on the front. Uh, Put the price stickers on the back or the sale stickers on the back where the cardboard is, where if I want to display it, I don't have to rebag it or risk puncturing the bag and enjoy it. Um and be careful when you're stocking them. You know, take your time. You don't have to take half the box and try to shove it into this little panel to try to, you know, make it so you don't have to restock it in a few hours, you know. It's not that hard to stock a comic, I don't think, you know. It shouldn't uh, be. And I think that would save you on cost because you'd have far less damages that you have to deal with and try to sell, you know, uh, that would be stuck in your backlog or whatever else. Uh, oh, and uh, for the companies themselves, please. Stop putting the barcode and the huge Marvel bar on the front. <laughs> You're hiding the beautiful cover work. I want to see the artist's work. I, I mean, Vertigo and DC are they're not as bad in the past. If, you know, this is kind of mild Vertigo, $1 or whatever. Kind of mild, you know, barcode down here. And it's the same color, so it doesn't it blends in all right. But still, it covers up what could be pretty spectacular art, you know? 
please stop doing this. DC, you're getting bad about it, especially with Rebirth, where you put the banner all over the top. Oh. It, it's al- it's getting almost as bad as Marvel, whereas Marvel has the bar on the bottom, the bar on the side, the logo, and then it has the <laughs> digital copy inside thing in the corner that takes up even more room. And then you have to obviously put the credits on there because you want to give credit to the artist and the writer. But th- there's barely any space for them now because half the, s- half the cover is advertisement, you know? Yeah, th- there's a better way. There is definitely a better way of doing yeah, this. Put, uh, put the advertisement inside the comic or in the back of the comic. Put the barcodes on the back of the comic. It's so much easier, both for me and for the store owners, to just scan it that way. Uh, and the logos, you know, if you have the you know DC logo in the corner or the Marvel logo in the corner, that's fine. That's great. That identifies your comic as that company. But don't put the big red bar, the big blue bar taking up, you know, an eighth of the comics cover. You know, I can't see any. I want to see the artwork, you know. Yeah, that, that's the point of getting a comic book, let alone a variant cover. Is like you are there for that cover. The cover is usually what sells someone on buying a comic that they haven't bought before, as far as like any kind of series is concerned. For sure. Uh you know, I, I got maybe a little idea. We'll see how it works out. Uh, people watching this or listening to this uh, on your podcast service, feel free to tweet at us at HDBVids on Twitter or visit our Facebook, hit the books, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, on Facebook and s- send me ideas. What what would you like to see your local comic book stores do to improve their, their business? What would you like the big companies to do to improve uh, their marketability to you and to fans alike? How can we make this community better? How can we keep our mom and pop comic book shops, you know, above water and support these local communities that quite frankly are kind of disappearing with the digital age? Yeah. Uh and what what can the comic book companies do to not just give us a bunch of fan service but actually produce a better product? Yeah. <coughs> and more sustainable product going forward. There's no doubt that the big money is in movies and video games and tv shows now it, it's hard to deny that but the comic book medium that forms it these are the things that build the, the the brick and mortar for what will be the foundation for those future movies for those future video games for those future artistic endeavors uh so please uh if you got an idea put it in the comments send it to twitter send it on facebook and maybe we'll make a segment where we take one suggestion every week or something if we get enough <laughs> yeah and we'll we'll throw it out there and let people discuss it. Yeah. Uh also on our Twitter or our Facebook page, if you have any idea as to how uh specifically the big company or big companies, uh Marvel and DC could better handle all of these let's call them legacy characters, please send us like comment after comment or idea after idea as to how comics could be doing something better for being more all-inclusive. Because we all want to see a character that we can identify with, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, but there has to be a better way. There has to be a better way than making 15 different Iron Men, Mm -hmm. like 100 different Captain Americas, 1,000 different Spider-Men, and I was going to say like multiple different forms of x-men but only wolverine's got that (laughs) like he's the only one um yeah like and i'm sure x-men fans would fight you about that but you know uh, i'm sure i'm sure they would (laughs) i'm sure they love x-men first class but (laughs) the point that i'm getting at here is uh well Actually, the point aside from the X-Men, because the X-Men are actually really good at just, oh, here's a new mutant. Here's mm-hmm. a new power. That's kind of what makes X-Men great. Yeah. It's like, you can come up with anything. Absolutely. And, yeah, here's an X-Men. And they uh, they they have struggled, because they, they, the whole point of the X-Men is that they are the community that is being warred against in the public argument, you know? Right. These are people that are being persecuted, that are being, you know sometimes killed off you know and unjustly so you know yeah like the, these are the basically the, the demonized people of society yeah. you know the, the demonized different ones and that's what makes them great yeah. and i think when you take that away from them it really 
it it yeah. it shits on them. Yeah, it, it shits on like the one thing that makes them great is that there's always the struggle of feeling like you don't belong. Absolutely. And then how do you adjust when you find a community where you do technically belong, but you're still very different, you know? Right. Um, yeah. In, the, <clears throat> in Wolverine's Inception, he was a, a really good poster boy for how you tell that story. Um, there yeah. are a slew of other characters that were good at that, too. But Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's like that when you take away <laughs> that struggle... The struggle that defined them as a group, mm -hmm. um, it's not the X Men anymore. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I want to thank you all for sticking with us this long. We are back in full form. We will be doing our best to get a new podcast episode every Monday, as well as our reviews in the meantime. I got to see Spider Man Homecoming so we can review it. Oh, you yeah. You'll see Wonder Woman review coming out. You'll see Gal uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 coming out along with this podcast. So look out for that. Be sure to check that out. It, uh, it, Logan review. For those not familiar, all our reviews yeah. are generally just a discussion between the two of us of what we thought about the movie uh, after seeing it, usually pretty recently after seeing it where we, we go for a spoiler-free discussion initially, and then we give you a big warning, and then we go straight into the spoilers and talk about how this might impact the those movie universes or what we might have improved on or whatever else. So be sure to check those out on our YouTube channel. Uh, hit the books. Um, like I said, send your suggestions to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, comments, whatever whatever medium you can, and I'll, uh, Emery and I will do our best to address them and if we really like your idea, especially for improving comic books and comic book stores themselves, uh, I will be more than happy to share them, maybe one or two a week if we can. Uh, we do have a program where we uh, we will take cosplay submissions and feature a cosplay of the week. So uh, feel free to send in your submission. If you want to be displayed here, we'll display you on the podcast and show you off, shout out your name or whatever tag you want to be known by. And uh, we'd love to see your cosplay out there. Oh, yeah. Give support to those fans that go out and make those custom costumes. And by all means, please do not uh, steal someone else's picture or claim your, that you are somebody else. And then we end up displaying somebody who does it, you know, professionally. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. isn't aware. You know, we, we really want to avoid any kind of conflict. So Yeah. Please send us your stuff. Yeah. Don't please don't send stuff you found on Google or, you know saw on your facebook feed or something right uh, if you want to point that kind of stuff out to us uh you you can do that on twitter yeah and then we yeah. can contact them ourselves you know oh yeah so uh thanks again remember look out for us on monday uh every week from now on we will do our best to keep to that schedule we'll see how it works again we've <laughs> we've constantly <laughs> been struggling with outside influences and forces uh but hopefully we'll be back regular again Back in full force. Yeah. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Anything else we need to mention? Um, I think we covered everything. Yeah, I can't think of anything, like, immediately. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and listening to Hit the Books Podcast. We'll see you next week. Bye.